folks welcome back we've got a blue acrylic primed canvas here it's 18 by 24 inch in landscape form okay that acrylic paint has been allowed to dry completely and then on top of that i've just done a little bit of a, a loose sketch of some hills and mountains and trees we're going to have a little road here a little bit of lake down in the corner as well uh, and that's also in acrylic but more of a brownie gray color to the sky because uh, this is all completely and utterly dry now i'm going to take a little bit of titanium white and a little bit of linseed oil about 50 50 mixed okay and i'm just going to coat the whole of the sky just like so and i'm going to go down to the horizon line where the mountains are and stop and then wipe most of the excess off okay so while i'm doing that please like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already happy happy days Go. So I've just knocked off any of the excess oil paint that's up there. The blue tint of the canvas will, will show through. Okay, now let's paint some sky. So let's get a big brush. Okay, a big brush. It's nice and clean and dry. And I'm going to go into some oil paint. And now this is a sky colour I've made from French Ultramarine. A tiny touch of phthalo blue. Tiny touch of red and plenty of white as well. It's going to be very similar to the colour that's on the canvas, but it's going to hit the white as well. So we'll get variants of colour up there. Okay, so I just want a soft, soft, subtle sky up here. Big brush makes little work of the sky. There we go. So just keep tapping it in. Hit the palette like so without painting your thumb. Puts a nice distribution of paint into the bristles. And away we go. Let's fire it up here. <laughs> Let's fire it in. Guess what I've been watching. Yeah. Okay. So take it all the way down. Down, down to the horizon line. And blend everything together. Maybe a bit more paint on this side. Going to have lots of dark trees there i think it's going to be quite a nice painting to be honest and one that i'm looking forward to doing right because of the glare of the lights above i can't really see this corner here just yet so you're gonna to have to bear with me so we get all that in and take it all across there we go nicely does it right I think that will do us for the background colours of the sky. Nice pastely blue. Right. Let's get rid of that. Let's pick me up a nice fan brush. We'll go for a Windsor and Newton fan brush. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take some white. And I'm going to use a little tiny touch of the raw sienna in there. Just to give it a little bit of a, uh, a brownie, peachy colour. Okay, I don't want many massive clouds up here. Okay, but I'm just going to put one or two things just to break up the flatness of that colour. I don't want much at all. Maybe that's just enough there. And flip the brush around, we'll put a couple in up there as well. The less we have... The less can go wrong, right? Someone wants to hold me. The less you do, the less that can go wrong. Okay. And then maybe a couple in here. Might not see some of these, might see a lot of these. We don't know yet till we start working down the canvas. Alright. There. That's it. Take the same brush that's got the sky colour on. And I'm just gonna tinker and tease. Mainly the base of where we put those floatery things in, but the whole thing wants just teasing in to the canvas. There we go. Just so we've got a little little indication of some very high up, very floatery clouds there and so on here. Let's work on the mountains. So we're going to use the same colours really. So that sky colour. I've just picked up a, 
a Winsor and Newton's flat brush. Okay, and I'm just going to grab a tiny bit more white. In fact, we'll just use the cloud colour that we had. Okay, like so. I just really find where these mountains are. Now, I don't want them to be too strong or too vivid or anything that's going to make the mountain leap on top of us. So, what we're painting it in black paint and then putting white paint on top of it, I just want a little uh, colour variant from the sky. Remember, the further things are away from us, the more bluer they are, the more less distinct they are and you know you can see the atmosphere between you and the object which in this case will be a mountain so we'll just put that in now, of course it'll need highlighting and shadowing but not great deal of highlights and shadows and we'll come down there like that and we'll just put that in again i think um, not even too sure which direction the light's going to come from. I know we're going to have some lots of grasses and stuff down here, so we'll have some some lights showing. Uh, let me think about it. Probably from this side here. That's my go-to side, isn't it? For for stuff like that. And we'll take that around like that. Grab a bit more of the pale colours, and we'll pop some on there and come down okay again this might be snow it might be just the highlighted side of a big rock or whatever i don't know we're going to blend this eventually just push it in again this is all nice and dry so we can push it about but you've got to really push it about like that we'll just take that down there Push this white paint in there and uh, grab a bit more for this little peak. Like so. So again, nothing too distinct. Can't see individual rocks and crevices. It's too far away. Let's grab a little bit more paint just to cover that up there like that i like it i like it i like it right in here we want a lot of mist so i'll just put some of that pale color in there like so right let's get a clean brush let's go to this blendery color okay and i'm just going to tease this backwards and forwards okay the top edge will be fuzzy and that's what we want really i want a fuzzy edge to the mountain because we can't see you know it gets diffused by the light and, and all sorts like that so a little bit of fuzziness doesn't hurt like that oh we lost an air can't leave an air right there can we and then just blend this out down at the bottom like so get rid of the blender right i'm going to take a little bit of that mustardy color and some white and a touch of just a touch of sap green plenty of white in this we're going to work on this distant distant foothill or hill or something along those lines but again i want it very pale very pale to have a little bit of a yellowy greeny tint to it but something that like that blue canvas will, will 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 start to show the thinner we put this on again we're covering the whole canvas but it will show okay it will show and again this part this part of the canvas is quite dry okay so just tease that around and down like that and i will come back and hit this with a couple more different colors in a moment Okay, in fact, I think I'm going to fill this part in as well. So I'm just going to grab a bit more of that sienna colour. Okay, a bit more, I think. And a bit more of the sap green. Just a touch. Okay. And again, this hill is 
there like that so it's just a bit stronger go over the sketching of the trees okay because we don't know where the trees are actually going to be we, we know there they're going to be some trees probably have a few more in between and it's just to give me an idea where where we're putting things okay i want it warming up because then it's looking quite a cool canvas at the moment cool composition so we'll need to start warming things up a lot of sunlight coming down so round about there so we've got another hill coming off there which will be a bit darker and just push this in so basically on this this hillside there i just just misted it all out with the blender brush just like so and just floated a little bit of white paint in here and there just to give it a little bit of more fogginess more mistiness right i've taken uh van dyke brown and no, that's actually burnt umber burnt umber and a little bit of uh, sap green touch of black down in there and maybe a bit of blue as well and i'm going to put another hill that's going to creep down again down there now this is in the shadow side of things and we're going to go over the treetops you see we're put a, a range of trees just down there and then we're going to take this off and it's going to peter off peter off I don't know, just down there, something like that. This path's going to follow that, you know, something like that. Okay, and then we're just going to push this about. Again, dry canvas, but we can really push this paint in and around the grain of the canvas because it's been coated. I always say this because it's been coated. That blue colour that we've got under there will give a cast throughout the whole entire composition. I don't know why I'm stopping at that tree. Um, but there we go right okay so i've got this big hill all in place and i've wiped it all off and i've put a bit of more color on and wiped it again and gone over it with a with a soft brush with a bit of white as well just to, to fog out some areas and now i've just put a little run of trees just down there and i'll show you how i make those in a moment but i've just put a little bit of uh grasses and stuff down there just a bit of yellow ochre colour. I've squirted out some yellow ochre as well. Uh, and white and a few other bits and pieces on there as well. Like that. Now I've made a dark greeny colour. Um, from sap green and black. And ochre and a bit of yellow and a bit of blue. A little bit of everything. And the original colour that we had up in the sky. That will run throughout the car composition. Throughout the canvas. Okay, so I've taken this little old kind of pointy brush and I'm thinking about here is where we'll have a tree. Just there like that. We want them bigger than that, but obviously nowhere near as big as what's going to come up here. And we can even start to pull out some, some arms and, and limbs and stuff like that on these trees. Get them a little bit bigger and we're going to go right to about here, I think. So maybe this is not the best brush to do this in. It, it was for the smaller trees. Uh, and I like it because it, 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 it holds a nice sharp point. And evergreen trees always have a nice sharp pointed top. So that's why I'm using it. It's not, it's not a quality brush by any stretch of the imagination. But what we use it for, well I'm assuming is, is quality. You might not. You might not think so if you're still watching i suppose you are okay right so just plow in some trees or the tops of some trees like that now make sure like i've got a couple of bent ones there uh, make sure that the majority of them grow straight towards the sky okay before we start working down here on the foregroundy stuff I think we'll put some of these big trees in or some of the layout of some of these big trees. So I've got a really dark colour. And again, you can see I've, I've basically built it on top of, of what we've already got on the, this tiny palette. So this is uh, sap green and viridian, a bit of blue, some black, some brown, and a tiny touch of the ochre thrown in there. Maybe a bit of brown in there as well, I don't know. Good dark colour on a number three fan brush. Okay, now I'm not going to just use the fan brush. Um, 
exclusively I will use other brushes as well and I'm just going to touch on see you can still see where I put the layout of the acrylic on and that's where we'll start our tree journey if that's if that's a word of, of where we put these trees okay so load the brush up and then just touch on and we'll put it down there and uh, we'll have another one. Oh, we've definitely got another one there, haven't we? There, like that. Okay, plenty of paint. Stick the bristles together. And that will be basically where these trees are going to be. Uh, I do want a couple more. Somewhere I'll probably put another one. I don't know. There. Get smaller. And it'll come all across all that lot. Okay there, and we will have a few more in the background now. I will put some some foliage on this now. And I just again, just use the corner of the brush. And I'm just going to just touch on and see where that takes us. If that's too, too big and lumpy, then maybe we might just change it somewhat. I think that's all right. I think that's all okay. For the moment, and then just hit at random and hit anywhere really. As these limbs, these parts of the tree will be growing anywhere, won't they? They won't be growing just you don't just want I put it down here, you don't just want shapes like that all the way down. If that makes sense, you want to just hit in various well you know how they're going to look and we know how our evergreen will look but we want it to become more organic down here is going to be a lot of dark anyway so we could just put that in i will be putting some of that lint free cloth on top of this just so we can suck up some of that oil before we come to work on it a little bit more I hope I made sense with all that. It's a really hot day. It's really hot in here. <laughs> and I'm gasping for a drink. I may even go get a drink in a minute. Cup of tea, yeah? On a hot day? <laughs> Come on, folks. Right, so just push some of this greeny, black, brown colour in. Like that. There we go, so I've just dampened off a lot of that, uh, I've not dampened it off, I've dried it out really, taken the oil out of the paint of all this, these trees. All right, look at all that, look, that's come off. All right, so uh, just use a liner brush and the same colour, and I'll come up here, and I'm just going to put a few little extra do free dos and do free dees out here on the the end of the limbs okay and if it looks erratic and and stuff like that that's good because it's it's organic isn't it you know that's what we want we don't want we don't want it looking like oh yeah you use the fan brush for that make it look like mm, how did that happen how did that go about so there we have it build up some more little details and again I haven't thinned any of this paint down this is just a normal paint that we've used no thinner no oil or anything like that in it just yet but because we've got a thin layer of paint on there now not thin paint it's a thin layer of paint I've got to keep saying that uh, it, it goes on quite easy and we get all these nice little variants into the branches of course in here you won't be able to see anything but we'll separate that with some highlights over this bank of trees like that there we go keep doing this till we get a nice little forest built up so let's put a few more highlights on these trees, just like that. I'm just varying the greens, getting progressively more towards the yellow tones. 
as I'm working my way through a colour stream. Uh, maybe a bit on there. I want. I still want a lot of it quite dark. You know, evergreen trees, fir trees, whatever we call them nowadays, are, are kind of dark anyway. But we still want to see a little bit of greenery here, here and there and everywhere, don't we? So all I'm doing is this is just a a uh, a, a a pretty pretty substandard pretty substandard filbert brush but it does work well with a bit of foliage for evergreens and then we'll come back with a liner brush and just really pick out the individual leaves here and there and everywhere where's this going to go it's there right where the sun's going to catch it there like so just keep playing with this take a step back every now and again I've not touched any of this like just yet uh, with this colour, but I will do at some point. Just get the main bulk of it done down here. When working on your evergreens, make sure that you don't forget the branches that come out to the front of the tree as well as the sides. Okay, so let's start here. And I usually go in like some kind of teardrop shape like that if that makes sense it's picking up the color that's underneath okay so we'll just have to be careful with this okay and just take some out there like that okay like so we've got a different color so i've added a bit of yellow and white to it where i put my finger and on this side we'll just some of, of those highlights and just blend it in to the tree itself the branch there a couple of that stick out like that easy when you're painting fir trees to forget the the branches that pop out towards you so like i've done here what i've what i've done is i've taken a branch okay and it's more like a diamond shape in a way and i'm just putting some lighter colors on one side like this and just merge it into the middle and just tinker with them and then just put a few specks here and there and work them up and it doesn't have to be completely accurate or you know uniform or anything let's let's leave it organic uh, like that and i'm just adding a bit of blue to that same color and on the shadow side like you can see i've done already there just to highlight it for for the purposes of the demonstration i'll put a little bit of something down there now this should if it works out okay the indication of a branch that's either hanging low and coming towards us so the top of the branch is there and it's it's hanging low and it's 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 in front it's on the it's on the front of the tree rather than just out to the sides uh, like that and we can keep changing the colors as we go along this is thinned out paint i've thinned it out with the, a couple of drops of oil not much i don't want to go too heavy on the oil just yet uh, like that may need to darken this area off a little bit okay because there's another branch just there so basically i've almost finished the painting i took a step back well actually I, I left it for an afternoon and i thought there was something missing and i could see that it needed some rocks so i've just painted a little bit of dark color down there for some rocks and got a little bit of a little kind of grey colour which we'll, we'll just put over the top a little light purpley grey like so I'll just pick out some first highlights of these rocks like that and we'll do the ones on this side as well they're not going to be much highlight so really less paint and there like that there where we'll just have a little bit of a, a secondary highlight just like that 
just out here on these rocks one or two drops of oil not much yeah like so after neaten all this uh, vegetation up as well but before we do that i'm going to grab a little bit of darkened off gray and put a few smaller stones which are a bit far away obviously then then these stones just out here in the vegetation the grasses and stuff i have a couple dotted about just there like so and take a step back and see if that's enough or if it's too many rub some away now i wasn't going to add any flowers in to this composition but i really think it brightens up the foreground somewhat and this is in the immediate foreground this this last little bit there where we see it so i have put some strokes of different colored grasses in with a bit of thinned out paint thinned out with linseed oil and i'm just going to take a bit of purple and this is made with magenta blue and a touch of white now i want it on the cooler side at this end uh, you can see we've got just magenta and white mixed up there to make those kind of flowers so i just want one or two in here and we'll just touch on with the uh with this little um kind of brush and we'll put a few little do free do's there and and there it's a little filbert brush little soft filbert brush really and this may give us a nice little iris right over that stone we've put in just there like so maybe this is duck pond over at the other side so we need obviously lots of flowers to keep the old bumblebees and dragonflies going now i'm just going to touch on to a touch of white into that same color okay that's the color there look at the state of the palette good in it okay just a touch of white just to highlight it up a little bit uh we'll just put a little speckle of something on there and on top there like that okay and maybe this one's got the same thing there as well so it is it is in the purple family just like that one is but it's a much cooler purple there i like it i like it then we'll, all we'll do is take a liner brush with some dark color a bit, a bit of that whatever that is and we'll just put some little things inside there where the bumblebee will land the dragonfly maybe we'll put a stick on that there can also put i think we'll put one here okay are we in shot well, i think we are let's get a bit of thinned out brown we'll put a little bit of the greater reed mace or as we can sometimes call them bulrushes um and we'll just put one there i think put it straight down like that okay and we'll give him a friend maybe i don't want him over the stone uh we'll put you there of course if we don't like it we can put him back into the path okay let's grab the knife and just grab any kind of dark paint this is thin really thin now this okay which is all right because we're right in the foreground but as soon as this painting is finished it's off straight down to lay flat whatever color this is maybe grab a bit more of the black into that all those messy colors scrape off instead of using a liner brush i'm just gonna pull straight down with that and we'll get a nice little straight stem of this greater reed mace just there with a little spike on the top like that and that take that same color and just put some dark leaves on there like so a bit of something down there as well mm. a few more blades of grass and reeds and stuff like that down past the duck pond and i think we have got a nice simple little painting okay so i've really enjoyed that one and if you've enjoyed it please like the video leave me a nice comment and subscribe if you've not done so already so until next time take care of yourself stay safe happy days i'll see you later